So now what I want to talk about is a concept called confidence intervals. And this is a little bit kind of a combination of the central limit theorem and the kinds of problems that you maybe statistically do if you're dealing with real data. Okay. The setup is the following. I have n, uh, x1 through xn are iid uh, random variables, okay, with mean mu and um, standard deviation sigma, okay. What I'm going to focus on right here is basically uh, m sub n, which is the average of these uh, random variables, okay. Now I know that um, kind of the various laws of large numbers tell me in a way, this is kind of slangy, that in the limit this mean looks like mu, okay, with probability one. In practice, what I want to do is I want to say, okay, well, I see a bunch of data that I sample from the distribution. What is a good range, an interval that I can be pretty sure the mean is inside, right? So kind of the way I want to phrase it is, um, let's let uh, 1 minus alpha be some large number, like 95% or 99%. What I want to do is I want to find an interval, L lower bound, upper bound, such that the probability that um, the true mean is in this interval is equal to 1 minus alpha. Okay, that's kind of the setup. It's a little bit different than what we talked about before. Um, this here is called the confidence level. And this range is called the confidence interval. Okay. And the idea, again, comes from the central limit theorem where we know that in the limit, uh, things are Gaussian. Okay. So here, uh, these L and U depend on a whole bunch of averaging of um, draws from the same PDF, right? So what I know is that, you know, this number, which comes from the Gaussian CDF and the central limit theorem, is approximately the probability that um, my sample mean minus the true mean is within this z sigma over square root of n, which we've spent a bunch of lessons kind of fooling around with, right? And so let me be um, a little bit more explicit. This is like saying that my um, mean is like this, which is the same as saying, if I just put mu in the middle, that's like saying I have the mean in this range. And this is, in fact, what the confidence interval is. Okay. And so the lower and the upper bounds I talked about are, in fact, basically this range. So basically, this is what I see from my measurements, and this is the actual kind of deviation I get. Now, the way this works is that, um, you know, here on the left-hand side, I have a Q function, which is underneath my head, right? So let me rewrite this in a slightly different way. So this is like saying I have the probability that my mean is in this range is equal to 1 minus 2 Q of Z, which I earlier said was 1 minus alpha. And so here, basically, here this is like saying my alpha is 2 Q of Z. Or a different way of saying it is that my z is, um, you know, kind of what I want to find is z sub alpha over 2, such that q of this number gives me alpha over 2, okay? And luckily, there are tables uh, that come from the q function that give me exactly these numbers, right? So if you were doing an exam or something like this, I would give you uh, kind of like an inverse Q table that says, okay, if I want to say, for example, that alpha is equal to um, 0 0.05, then I would look for the number Z of 0 0.025, which I would find in my table is 1.96. That is Q of 1.96 equals 0 0.025, which is the number that I need, right? So instead of having to kind of look at the 
forward queue tables and find like these averages. Instead, you can actually just kind of look at it from this inverse queue table. So let me just do a quick example to show how you'd use this in practice. Okay, so here's the example. So let's suppose that xi has unknown mean and variance equal to 1. Okay, I measure x uh, 100 times to obtain this empirical measurement that the mean of those numbers was 5.25. And now I want to find the 95% confidence interval on mu. Okay, well, my mu then is going to be basically um, mn plus, uh, I guess it's basically going to be mn plus or minus the range, um, you know, z sigma over square root of n. And now what do I know, right? I know that this is like uh, 5.25 plus or minus you know, what is my z? So 95% confidence interval means that, again, I need exactly the number that I happen to derive on the previous page, right? My z is going to be, um, I need z of 0.025, right? Which is 1.96. So that's going to be 1.96. My sigma is equal to 1. My square root of n is going to be equal to square root of 100. So my confidence interval is basically 5.25 minus whatever this number is, which is like basically almost 0.2, right? Or yeah, 0.2, and 5.25 plus 0.2, which is equal to 5.05, 5.45, right? So this would be my 95% confidence interval on the mean given the values that I saw, right? Now, it's kind of weird because in practice it's like saying, well, under what circumstances would I know the variance, but I wouldn't know the mean, right? That's kind of the setup here. In that case, when I don't know either the variance or the mean, then you use different tables, right? So instead of using a Q table, you'd use a different table. And if you've ever done a problem that involves like the student's t distribution, that's where that kind of thing comes from. You have tables for the t distribution, tables for chi squared distribution, things like, you know, depending on the type of interval you want to find and the information that you know, you use different numerical tables. And so um, I may talk a little bit in a future video about something like the t-distribution, but for the moment in probability, I think that you know this is like the more directly from the central limit theorem kind of problem that you're likely to see.